For most things that you buy, your love for them peaks as soon as you open the box. From then, it's a slow and tedious journey towards upgrading and starting the whole process all over again. Occasionally, though, you find something that you like so much that with each passing day and week, you like it more and more. I, um, I have this personal rule with boxes that I'll keep the box of anything that costs me more than £100. I don't know where that rule came from, I don't know why I have it, and it's never served me any good, but um, just something I do. I don't think the camera was in that. Anyway, I want to talk about that box, not really the box, what was in the box, because um, I got it two years ago. So yeah, this is my Lumix G9, and if you followed this channel for a while, you'll have seen this hundreds of times. Now what started as a pretty straightforward, albeit exciting, purchase, it has become like a, in many ways, a, a life, I'd say a life-changing, a career-changing purchase. And I've loved this G9 so much that eventually I became a Lumix ambassador, and uh, as many of you will know, lots of videos on this channel have actually been sponsored by Lumix. So uh, anyone that's thinking that this is gonna be a video about Micro Four Thirds or the G9 that's unbiased in any way, what I'd say to that is, obviously not. No, it's a completely biased video. I love this camera. Now I should preface this by saying that, like a lot of photographers I know who make their living with cameras, I didn't choose this camera because of sensor size. In fact, sensor size and resolution, they're not even in my top five considerations when I buy a camera. No, I bought this camera because at the time, this was my standard zoom lens. And I wanted this to be my standard zoom lens. And uh, as somebody who climbs mountains and shoots in quite remote places, this, or going from this to this, had quite a lot of value for me. Uh, now, I knew my image quality wasn't gonna suffer going to Micro Four Thirds because I don't shoot above ISO 800 hardly ever to be honest. Uh, I don't shoot weddings, I don't shoot sports, and like 99.9% .9 of other photographers day to day, I don't need anything more than 20 megapixels. Because, like the rest of the world, most of my images now, both commercial and personal, they're all seen on the internet, on low res web pages, or apps, I guess, like Instagram and stuff. And even if I was working on a campaign that was gonna end up on a billboard, an iPhone has plenty of resolution for that. A uh, bit of an aside on image quality just quickly actually, last night I was watching the Michael Jordan documentary on Netflix, the first episode of it, I think it's called The Last Dance, the first episode was great, I'm going to watch episode 2 tonight. And basically the premise of it is that there was a, a camera crew embedded in the Chicago Bulls squad for the 1997 season, I think, uh, and the rest of the program is essentially talking heads which were filmed, I guess, in the last couple of years. So there's 20 years between the talking heads footage and the embedded camera crew following the Chicago Bulls footage. I didn't notice once the difference between the quality of footage, even though there's 20 years between them. Now I'm sure if I went back and watched that episode or when I watch episode two, because I was aware of it after the episode, the fact that I didn't notice it, I'm sure I'll notice it going forward. But the point is the story was good and therefore it didn't notice that I was watching way out of date technology versus up-to-date technology, even when they were put right side by side next to each other. Didn't even cross my mind. And for me, I find more often than not, it's exactly the same thing with stills. Image quality has very little correlation with the quality of an image. And yet, a lot of camera manufacturers put all their resources into getting bigger and bigger numbers out of their cameras. Canon, for example, has just released an 8K camera. I mean, there are 8K cameras that exist anyway, but this is like a, well, I don't know why it's special to be honest, but everyone's raving about it. And uh, I get why they do it. It's much easier to market a camera when there's a big number in the spec sheet. It's much easier to do that than say, oh, this camera is a, a bit more comfortable to hold than the last one. But for stills, given that the vast majority of images now are seen online, it sort of feels like building cameras that have got more and more and more resolution is the same thing as like car manufacturers building family hatchbacks that have got higher and higher and higher top speeds, even though speed limits are coming down. It just wouldn't happen. Instead, they focus on things like safety and comfort and usability. 
All while a lot of camera manufacturers are focusing just on megapixels as far as I can see. And I for one would prefer if all camera manufacturers were working on things like ergonomics more than they were things like resolution that nobody really needs. So yeah, long story short, two years shooting on Micro Four Thirds and with this G9, and I reckon of all the places I've been with it, all the countries I've shot with this, I could probably count on two fingers on the top of my head times when I wish I'd had a bigger sensor. Both of those times I was trying to take pictures of the Northern Lights and both of those times I would have liked a bigger sensor, but both of those times I still ended up with images that I loved. So first thing I'd say, straight out of the bat, out of two years of learning with a Micro Four Thirds camera, if you're an outdoors photographer who shoots at any time other than the middle of the night all the time, you will love a Micro Four Thirds camera. You'll get great photos from it, I'm sure. If you're an astrophotographer, definitely get a bigger sensor, but if you're not, I think you can get lots out of this. And I would defy anyone who says that they can see the difference between uh, a micro four thirds image and a full frame image when the light's good. Yeah, like I said, if you're shooting a lot in low light in the middle of the night, I, I wouldn't get a micro four thirds camera. I'd get a, a camera with a bigger sensor. Unless you want to stay really, really light, in which case you can get a Micro Four Thirds camera and you can get plenty of fast lenses for this camera. So like the 10 to 25, which I'm still mulling over, that's a full frame equivalent of 20 to 50 mil with um, an aperture of f1.7. Not the same depth of field, but a really wide aperture. Uh, but yeah, all things being equal, I would suggest that a Micro Four Thirds camera is not going to shine for photographers who um, shoot in places where it doesn't shine. So size, as I've mentioned, was one of the big reasons that I got a Micro Four Thirds camera. Although, as you can see, you might be able to tell in my hands if you've not seen one in person, it's um, it's actually quite big. So if you compare this to uh, a number of the mirrorless full frame cameras, this probably wouldn't be much smaller. In fact, it might be bigger than some of them. Uh, now, I clearly am not a camera manufacturer, uh, but it seems to me that it's much easier to shave weight and size off of a camera body than it is to shave weight and size off of lenses because the size of the lenses seem very dependent on the size of the sensor. And that is where you get tiny Micro Four Thirds lenses. So yeah, the overall size of my kit is much smaller than it would have to be if I was shooting with um, a bigger sensor size, which I love. I've got to be honest though, I don't really love the way that the G9 looks. It's not the prettiest camera I've ever had. I mean, I do like this red thing around the top there, but aside from that, I don't think it's the best looking camera I've ever had. Not that that really matters. I mean, the looks of a camera relative to its performance is about the same as the looks of a toothpaste tube relative to the toothpaste performance. It literally doesn't matter. Uh, so I get lots of uh, communications from people each month, emails, YouTube comments, Instagram DMs, that kind of thing, from people telling me that they've switched to Micro Four Thirds or just a smaller sensor, like an APS-C if they've been shooting full frame, whatever, and they say that they're absolutely loving the fact that they've done so, they've not noticed uh, big detriments in image quality that they expected and that they love having lighter gear. That's awesome. I also get emails from people occasionally uh, saying that they really want to invest in Micro Four Thirds but they're concerned that it's, it's going to die out, it's going to fizzle, because how can this camera system with a much smaller sensor survive when uh, there's so much full frame stuff going on. I think you have to understand that this system was developed at a time when there were already plenty of larger sensors available. It's not like they invented it and then the next week someone came along with a, a sensor size that was much bigger and then they thought, oh no, we've been trumped there. This was designed because it's got a smaller sensor and therefore can have things like smaller lenses. Uh, also, the first Micro Four Thirds camera that I got, I think was the GX1 back in 2011, 2012, somewhere like that, uh, which I think actually was probably one of the better looking cameras that I've ever owned. And I remember distinctly when I was researching that camera, reading loads and loads of blogs and forums of people saying exactly the same thing. They were worried that Micro Four Thirds was going to die out because the sensor was just too small. Fast forward eight, nine years and uh, it's still going strong. Basically, since this system has been invented, some people have thought that it's going to die out and uh, yeah, it's still going strong. Look at how many lenses are available for this system and tell me again that you think it's going to die out. I don't think so. Not anytime soon. I mean, it might. I don't have a crystal ball, but if I was going to put money on it, I'd suggest that Micro Four Thirds is, is plenty safe for the time being. 
This is another thing that people like to uh, debate, whether or not you can use a micro Four Thirds camera for professional use. Now I've seen professional campaigns and people get paid for shots shot with phones loads. This isn't a phone, it's much more capable than a phone, therefore you can use this in professional applications. Uh, what I would say as well is that the reason, the likely reason that phones for example don't get used more in professional jobs is purely because you can't trust them in extreme environments, in places where you've got to put a camera in a bit of a precarious position in order to get the shot. I mean a phone is basically made of glass, why on earth would you risk it? This though, and cameras like this, are built like absolute tanks. It's weatherproof, freeze proof, and I've thrown this round all over the world and here we are with a couple of scratches two years later. It's an absolute unit. And that is the qualifying feature of a camera for professional use, as far as I'm concerned, not the size of the sensor. So yeah, two years with this camera, my favorite camera ever. Just not my favorite looking camera ever, I would say. And I also don't like the shutter. The shutter's really light. If you've got the G9, you'll know the shutter's really light. And pretty much to a person, I don't know anyone who likes the light shutter, so. Not the biggest fan of that. Aside from that though, the ergonomics, the placement of the buttons, the menus, the speed of the camera, all of it I absolutely love and place much more value on than just how big the sensor is. And uh, all those things are things that I consider much more readily than say resolution when I'm trying to work out what camera to buy. And uh, this has ended up being probably one of the better purchases of my life. So um, yeah. That's my two year roundup. Anyway, yeah, just a quick video. I'm uh, still stuck indoors, as you can see. We're still under lockdown in the UK. Starting to wind me up now. I'm trying not to take it personally, but basically if you follow this channel again for a while, you'll know that uh, just before this lockdown, I started a series of outdoor videos called Stills in Motion. The point of them was to go outdoors exploring, taking photos and making vlogs about that. And um, yeah, four weeks after starting that, we have the biggest social restrictions since World War II come in. And I mean, I know everything that's going on is, is much more serious than my little YouTube videos, but um, yeah, try not to take it personally. In fact, the other day when I was moaning about this to someone, they told me to imagine this happening without an internet connection. And I haven't moaned since then, actually. Imagine that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know if, you, uh, if you've taken up Micro Four Thirds recently and if you like it or the other way around, or just let me know whatever, really. I'm uh, I'm keen to hear from people. I've not seen anyone other than my wife in uh, quite a long time. So, so yeah, it'd be good to chat. See you next time. Thanks for watching.